Okay, so in this video I'm going to be talking about this guitar, which is a 335 style semi-acoustic guitar. It's an Ibanez AS Artstar 153. Um, I've owned this guitar, they're not new. This guitar is a few years old, I've had it a few years. I bought it second hand off eBay. Uh, got it about half price at about 850 new, so I paid 450 I think, second hand for it. Um, talking about second, it has an S stamped in the back there. I'm going to talk a little bit about that one, exactly what it means and whether it means shitty, shite, or super special, stuff like that. Um, talk a little bit about the guitar uh, and some demo playing. Something you may have noticed with this particular guitar is that I've changed the uh, pick guard. The normal pick guard that comes with it is this kind of camouflage. Don't really notice it because it sort of blends in with the finish of the guitar. But I didn't like the look of that at all. I prefer the kind of classic look. It's only a cheap bit of plastic anyway, the pick guard. Um, eBay. 10 15 quid from all parts or whatever but i just like the look of it you know like that maybe we can start with just hearing what it sounds like um, acoustically i've not got the amp on so maybe we can start with hearing like i said flat one strings um first thing for me is to hear what a guitar sounds like acoustically you know if you play You want to hear how the guitar sort of sustains and rings before you start worrying about fret buzzes and stuff. Maybe the first thing to check out is is how the guitar sounds in terms of volume. Maybe you know it's that simple. Does it sound good acoustically? This guitar does. Um, I obviously checked it out before I bought it. Volume wise, if you're thinking of, because I play a lot with, without an amp plugged in, um, if you're thinking of uh, doing the same, you will get obviously more. More than you do from a Strat or whatever, but. It's not an arch top, it's not an acoustic guitar as such, so you're not really you're not really gonna get you know a massive amount of volume. Anyway, let's do some playing. So it does sound appealing, I think, with these. Uh, it has got a certain charm, you know, in terms of it chiming. Uh, new strings tend to sort of irritate me a bit, particularly with picking, if you're angling the pick a little bit. and You don't really notice on the higher strings. Happily pick away on those, but on the lower strings you get that sort of, uh, with the angle. get a little bit of uh, grit in there which uh, isn't there with the flats not that I'm going to do too much of that but um, there you go acoustically it sounds pretty it's got a bit of charm in terms of zing or whatever you know I quite like I just like guitar so find your reason to like it
So what does the S mean on the headstock? Shitty, shite, shagged. Um, second, probably. Um, the workers in the factory, yeah, this particular factory would have been in China because this is a Chinese made guitar. Uh, the early issues of this guitar were made in China and then they shifted production to Indonesia, I think. Uh, anyway, they would have used the same system with sticking an S on there as most factories use. I think uh, originally Gibson were known to have uh, done this, the employees at, at Gibson would put an S on there to mean that the guitar kind of met quality control but not you know not deemed high enough standard to be uh, shipped out so they were sold off a little bit cheaper but obviously uh, there's an opportunity there for was or is you know in any current factory for the uh, guys working there to say well I could put an S on this guitar and get it cheap and also to my mate cheap because uh, it's a nice one you know and you could therefore find a nice version of a particular model of guitar that had an S that was maybe special and not shite, shitty or shagged. <laughs> um, I'm still undecided. Uh, I can't find anything really wrong with this guitar in terms of finish, vanish. You know, it's all the binding, everything in lays, everything's done nicely. I can't see filler in there, you know. Um, there's a couple of little things, like this is ebony, and I looked up, uh, the, the fingerboard is ebony, and I did look up the fingerboard, uh, ebony can sometimes have this kind of uh, brown, it looks more like rosewood in places, it's like suspicious that someone hadn't dyed the wood or whatever, or whatever material it is, you assume it's ebony. Uh, I know Gibson have used other materials, um, other than, uh, there's some rich light they're using on the, um, I was lusting after a, a Gibson ES275 for some time, but they're rather pricey, so I end up, you know, end up with this. Buy my album and I'll be able to afford high-end guitars. Um, anyway, you know, I've done nitpicking. I, I think I, I looked that up and Ebony can have that kind of uh, imperfection, if you like. It's not always uh, black because I've owned two guitars. I had a Kramer years ago and I had a John Schofield Ibanez, as I mentioned. Uh, JS100 that had an ebony fingerboard. So I did think about that thing. Well, is that going to put people off? It might put some people off. The matching on the top, you could say, well, but I've seen other guitars, expensive guitars that, you know, you could say, well, there's a little mark in it there or whatever. But, you know, playing wise, sound wise, it's all good. So uh, maybe we should say special and not shite. Um, there you go. I'll leave you with that. Okay, before I leave you, let's just try out this try sound. Try out the try sound. Try three-way switch, yeah? Try meaning three. So we've got a three-way switch here, which is humbucker, um, normal mode for the neck pickup. It works on the neck pickup only. Uh, humbucker, coil tap, single coil switch, and an out of phase switch. So you can hear that. the sound at all. So you can hear the sound. Okay, center position.
So this is flat one strings with the tri sound switch. Position one. Position two. Position three. 